of Ontario to have a ride on this new subway and the station's people are just in awe of how terrific they are and so it, it's a very, very exciting day. And I think I might just add to that. I mean, I'm particularly excited and proud because uh, this is my final act as the CEO of the TTC. But I'm also very proud of my team because a huge amount of effort goes into opening a subway extension. You've got to build it. You've got to uh, license all the equipment. You've got to train the staff. You've got to get the signaling system working, a brand new signaling system, state of the art. You've got to uh, get everything cleaned up. You've got to get all the furniture fitted, get the locks changed, get the station staff changed, get the events plan right. And I couldn't be proud of my team today. This is the culmination of many years of work. It's had lots of challenges, but I promise you, Mr. Mayor, we'd have this open by the end of December 17, and we have. And I will tell you, that's true because the, the very day after I was elected, he told me about all the trouble this project was in, and he said, if you support this plan that I have, uh, which we did, the City Council did, uh, we will have this thing open in 2017. And based on the report he'd given me, I was a bit skeptical because you would be, and uh, sure enough, everybody worked hard on the TTC, all the men and women who helped to build this and put in the signals and do all the work, the people who work for the TTC and others, and uh, here we are. And so I just think it's a great day for Toronto, and what I've been saying the last few days, and I know Mr. Byford agrees, this city cannot stand still. We have to be doing this all the time, having openings and beginnings of construction and groundbreaking and ribbon cuttings, uh, not because it's a photo op, but because it's transit that we're building and that we're getting going uh, in the way that Mr. Byford said, because this city fell decades behind uh, on transit, and now we're trying to make up for lost time. So that's another reason why today is so exciting, because, you know, it's, a, it's heralding a new era where we're going to be building transit, cooperating with the other governments uh, to get people moving in the city, because we just have to do that. How will you encourage people to leave their old habits behind of using their car, using their old routes, and use this new Line 1 extension? Uh, well, first up, uh, for the, just today, the fact that the TTC is free all day, thanks to the province with the mayor's support, um, I think is, a, is encouragement in itself. And I was at the open house yesterday and the contest winner ride, and people were ag agog. They couldn't believe uh, how beautiful these stations are. Um, so the way to get people riding, and I think it would be busy anyway, because you've got York University as a key destination, no longer needing to be served by 2,000 and buses, but a state-of-the-art railway. Um, but the whole TTC, we've been uh, on the mayor's watch. We've been driving up service quality. We've been investing in transit. The, uh, this council under the mayor gave us $95 million extra, a record investment for the TTC. So in, in driving up punctuality and reliability and cleanliness, uh, that's how we get people back to this system. We've cut delays on line one by 21%, delay incidents by 7%, uh, track fires are down 48%. On the surface, short turns, the bane of people's lives are down nearly 90%. That's how you get people back to transit and radical uh, suggestions or radical proposals like with the Mayor's support, the King Street pilot, where, where suddenly ridership is just rampant. So um, I've loved doing uh, the job I've done, uh, and uh, that's how you get people back to transit because with this is, it's been this ongoing five-year renaissance of the TTC that I know will continue after I'm gone. I'm actually thinking of having him taken into custody uh, <laughs> so he can't leave. But you know what? He's left a great team in place, and we are proceeding ahead with a whole bunch of other projects. And I spoke, I spoke with people yesterday, <laughs> people from Vaughan. People forget a lot of the cars that make up the congestion in Toronto are coming from outside the city. And I spoke with people myself yesterday who said, I've been driving all these years into the city because I had to. And they're now saying that this uh, subway will allow them a chance to uh, take their car to the subway uh, and to then get on the subway and ride downtown, which they're looking forward to, not just to help us with congestion, but they think it's going to be a more relaxing uh, kind of commute for them and, and probably much shorter. In fact, people were telling me yesterday they thought it might cut their commute in half, uh, including students at York. So this is all good news, and uh, the key is now to carry on uh, with the work that Mr. Byford and his team have begun and to continue to build transit, continue to open transit, continue to run it better, modernize it, and that's exactly what we're going to do. And do you feel like this is the legacy that you're leaving behind? Uh, well, it's not me. At the end of the day, uh, I, I, I oversee a great team. It's the team that matters. Uh, I, what I am proud of is that I'm leaving behind a fantastic executive team. We've rebuilt the executive team of the TTC. We now have six men, six women, high-quality individuals, and 15,000 fabulous TTC employees, all of whom are pulling in the, in the same direction. It's all about a transit system that makes Toronto proud. So it's not me. Uh, it's the team, and I couldn't be prouder of them or more proud of them than I am today.
It's taken a long time for us to get to this point. There were delays, though. The costs were overrun. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, the, the, this project, it's no secret, has faced challenges. It's faced myriad challenges. Uh, uh, Carl Knox, uh, one of our uh, contractors, was tragically killed at York University. You know, may he rest in peace. Um, we've had two very harsh winters. We've had issues with contractor performance. We've had issues of our own. Uh, but the bottom line is, at the end of the day, uh, we, we did what we said we'd do. We reset the pro uh, project back in 2015. Uh, I've said to the mayor, I'm bringing it in on revised time. I believe it can be on revised budget. We've still got some work to do with claims, uh, but we're well through, uh, well on the way through, working our way through those. And I should say, uh, you know, when I took office, I was told right away by Mr. Byford he didn't wait uh, to say this was in a real mess and it had accumulated over a number of years, and that uh, he had a plan to fix that, and uh, he brought that plan forward. It was approved by the council, it was funded by the council, and it got back on track. And that's really the key, and that's a sign of his great leadership that that plan was not only uh, uh, you know put together uh, but was implemented uh, with the support I should say of uh, of the chair of the TTC Josh Cole who's just joined us but that's the key when you have a problem do you sort of wallow in it and do you sort of let it open in 2019 which is what was going to happen and way more over budget than it is uh, now and in fact no the answer was that uh, Mr. Byford and his team put a plan together they implemented it with the support of the council and the, the commission and we're here today in 2017 not 2019 people are going to ride on the subway and that's a great tribute to him uh, but also to the council that backed him up and just said we're going to stand behind you to get this done and he did what are some of the lessons learned from all of this uh, well, I think um, a key point is uh, absolutely to get the design uh, locked down uh, in, in, the, in the early days because that has been a, a, an issue for the project because the, the stations were not going to look as grandiose as, as what we have. Um, to get the contracts right, um, to get contractor performance right, uh, to, uh, you know, to, to probably, I'd say, have the contract structured in a different way so that one contractor's performance can't knock on to another's. Um, but uh, we're very proud of what we've built. Uh, Chair, I don't know if you'd like to say anything. This, under Chair Cole's leadership, we are making changes to the way the TTC manages capital projects, and I think that's, uh, that's a, a huge legacy for you, Chair. Yeah, I think we've learned lessons that we have to manage our big capital projects differently, and we are doing that now. I actually think TTC is going to set the standard for not only transit agencies, but municipal projects now around North America with what we've learned from this. And so we're doing things differently. And I think the other thing we've learned is you need oversight on these projects too. Uh, you need a, a board and a council who doesn't lose track of these projects. And, and that, I think, was happening last term, and uh, that's something we fixed. And we met about this project relentlessly. Uh, my board got an update at least on every single board meeting, and if not, more and so I think that's something we've learned too and we have to do that on all these big projects. I asked the other two how excited they were about this morning and what about you? I kind of can't believe it's here after everything you just heard us say and all the work that's been put into it, but I'm ecstatic. and I think certainly residents will be too. Uh, my kids are on their way because they want to get on the first ride with uh, you know, with me and the mayor and Andy. And so it's, a, it's an exciting day for transit and it should tell Torontonians that it's worth investing in transit. It's worth putting up with the construction. And I think when people see this uh, today and beyond, they'll, they'll realize that. And now that this dream has come to fruition, what's the next priority? Well, I live on Eglinton right now, and so construction's happening there. And, you know, as the mayor has said many times, we're forging ahead with a real plan. Projects are being worked on, they're funded, and so work's happening in this city. So it's no longer about debating transit, transit's getting built. And so this is just one of many projects that's underway, and this city's going to look very different in a few years because of all this work. And I hope, I hope that today, you know, will cause people who have been sort of wanting to engage in endless debate to say that if you want to engage in endless debate, you won't have days like today because they'll just be postponed and postponed and postponed. And that it is indeed time to get ahead with Smart Track and with the Bloor Danforth, the Scarborough subway extension and with waterfront transit and with the LRTs. It's time to move forward. We need to have this transit. And I think this is the proof positive how excited people are, what a difference it's going to make to their lives. And I'm just determined with, uh, with Josh Cole and, and the TTC team to just move us forward. That's what we have to do as a city. It's growing too fast for us to play games anymore. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so you. much. Thank, Thank you. you.